Well, hail and welcome everyone to Midgard Musings. My name is Jesse and I am the host here on this channel. If you are interested in things pertaining to Norse paganism, Norse heathenry, Germanic paganism, a lot of times uh, this gets classified or identified in many different terms, also true being one of them. If any of those things are of interest to you and you want to kind of follow along with what I do, then I invite you to please subscribe to the channel down here below. Ding the bell for notifications. Also make sure that your mobile devices um, have notifications enabled because I know a lot of uh, you folks out here are following and listening and watching what I do here um, on your mobile devices. So make sure all your mobile devices have the uh, notifications enabled and turned on for YouTube specifically. And uh, follow along with what I do here, subscribing, making sure that you've got notifications turned on. Um, all of that greatly helps the channel. Um, uh, and also check the description area down below for ways that you can help support Midgard Musings, whether it be through following me on social media, um, buying merchandise, becoming a patron on Patreon. All of that stuff is linked down below in the Linktree link. Um, it's all there. Um, so check it all out and see what fits you. All right, so as you can tell by today's video subject, today's video title, it is a hail, it is a uh, salute, as it were, to the fathers, our fathers, the all-father, as it were, um, perhaps even. Here in the United States, it is Father's Day. This is an annual recurring holiday where fathers are celebrated. And I wanted to make a video to hail the fathers. Um, the video content that you're about to uh, partake of and listen to or watch or whatever is a reading that I am delivering to you of the uh, Poetic Edda, a poem from the Poetic Edda. It's coming from the Poetic Edda, the poem Rigstula. And I thought that this would be a fitting poem to recite um, and read on Father's Day because the poem lays out the groundwork, as it were, um, at least in the mythology, of where humankind, mankind, uh, the various classes and societal structures of mankind came from. And they all, with, at least within the mythology, came from and were sired from the same source. So Rigstula, or the Song of Rig, um, sort of lays out that groundwork. And um, some people will tell you or, 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 or share with you the idea that Rig in this poem is another name for Odin, um, a more popular approach or understanding of who Rig is in this poem is that Rig is Heimdall, the watchman of the gods, the one who is timeless, as it were, the ever vigilant, the ever watchful guardian of Asgard. And Rig is believed to be the sire or fatherer of the various classes, societal classes of mankind. We're speaking of the, the thrall class, the sort of middle class or, um, you know, the everyman, you know, um, what you might uh, look at in, in, in modern society as like the middle class and then the nobility. But Rig has sired each and every one of those low, middle and upper class individuals. So I thought that it would be a fitting poem to recite and read today on Father's Day and to give us very special hail and thanks to all the men folk, all the fathers here um, who are watching and out here um, in the world who have taken up 
the responsibility of fatherhood. Now, one thing that I just want to briefly say, it is Father's Day. Um, last month was a day of the month where it was Mother's Day. Um, I just want to give a very special shout out to all of the parents, whether you are the mother figure, the father figure. Um, just as a reminder that today in the modern 21st century, quite often the um, titles of mother and father have to be shared or adopted by individuals um, who are carrying the responsibilities of both the father and the mother. In olden times, and in traditional times perhaps, those roles and those responsibilities were a bit different and separated at their time. But in today and in modern times, the roles of the father and the mother separately and collectively um, carry with them special responsibilities. And, and there may be people out here watching or listening who have to adopt the responsibility of a, of a father role and, and you are a mother or vice versa. Um, I just want to say that, again, in the interest of giving a special hail to our fathers, uh, those who have sort of, like, like I said, taken up the responsibility of a father, um, a very special hail to you, but it is not a slight in any sort of way to any of those who identify or take up, again, the responsibility of the father or the mother in their respective roles within their own hearth cults. And on a personal note, I grew up with a father who is still alive, at least to this day. I also grew up with a very active male figure in my life, my uncle, who helped form the person that I am today through his involvement in my life. So again, this day is a special hail to the male, the men, the fathers, those who have maybe not sired their own children, but who have nonetheless taken up a fatherly sort of role in helping to form and shape the children in uh, giving them a strong foundation to build on, helping guide our children, helping guide uh, the young people of our future who will carry on our legacies. So again, today is a special hail and thank you to those. So without further ado, thank you all for listening and watching. Let's jump in to Rigstula, the lay of Rig, Rig song, and learn about how Rig sired the various classes, the societal classes of humankind, of mankind. Here we go. They tell in old stories that one of the gods, whose name was Heimdall, went on his way along a certain seashore and came to a dwelling where he called himself Rig. Men say there went by ways so green of old the god, the aged and wise, mighty and strong, did Rig go striding. Forward he went on the midmost way. He came to a dwelling, a door on its posts. In did he fare on a floor was a fire. Two hoary ones by the hearth there sat, Ae and Eda, in olden dress. Rig knew well wise words to speak. Soon in the midst of the room he sat, and on either side the others were. A loaf of bread did Eda bring, heavy and thick and swollen with husks, Forth on the table she set the fire, the fair, and broth for the meal in a bowl there was. Calf's flesh boiled was the best of the dainties. Rig knew well wise words to speak, thence did he rise, made ready to sleep. 
Soon the bed himself did he lay, and on either side the others were. Thus was he there for the three nights long, then forward he went on the midmost way, and so nine months were soon passed by. A son bore Eda, with water they sprinkled him, with a cloak his hair so black they covered, Thrail they named him. The skin was wrinkled and rough on his hands, knotted his knuckles, thick his fingers, and ugly his face, twisted his back, and big his heels. He began to grow and to gain in strength. Soon of his might, good use he made. With fast he bound and burdens carried, home bore faggots the whole day long. One came to their home, crooked her legs, stained were her feet, and sunburned her arms. Flat was her nose. Her name was Thir. Soon in the midst of the room she sat. By her side there sat the son of the house. They whispered both, and the bed made ready, Thrail and Thir, till the day was through. Children they had, they lived and were happy. Fjosnir and Klur, they were called, methinks, Chaim and Klegi, Kefsir, Fulnir, Drum, Digarli, Drot and Legyaldi, Lut and Hosvir. The house they cared for, ground they dunged, and swine they guarded. Goats they tended, and turf they dug. Daughters had they, Drumba and Kumba, Okvinyalfa. Arinelfa, Isia and Ombot, Ekintyosna, Totrugilpia, and Tronbenia, and thence has risen the race of thralls. Forward went Rig, his road was straight. To a hall he came, and a door there hung. In did he fare, on the floor was a fire. Offi and Alma owned the house. There sat the twain, and worked at their tasks. The man hewed wood for the weaver's beam. His beard was trimmed, or his bro. His beard was trimmed, or his brow a curl. His clothes fitted close, in the corner a chest. The woman sat, and the distaff wielded. At the weaving with arms outstretched she worked. On her head was a band, on her breast a smock. On her shoulders a kerchief with clasps there was. Rig knew well wise words to speak. Soon in the midst of the room he sat, and on either side the others were. Then took Alma the vessels full with the fare she set. Calves flesh boiled was the best of the dainties. Rig knew well wise words to speak. He rose from the board, made ready to sleep. Soon in the bed himself did he lay, and on either side the others were. Thus was he there for three nights long. Then forward he went on the midmost way, and so nine months were soon passed by. A son bore Amma, with water they sprinkled him. Karl was they named him, and a cloth she wrapped him. He was ruddy of face and flashing his eyes. He began to grow 
and to gain in strength. Oxen he ruled, and plows made ready. Houses he built, and barns he fashioned. Carts he made, and the plow he managed. Home did they bring the bride for Karl, in goatskins clad and keys she bore. Snur was her name, neath the veil she sat. A home they made ready, and rings exchanged. The bed they decked, and a dwelling made. Sons they had, they lived and were happy. Hall and Dreng, Holth, Thane and Smith, Breith and Bondi, Bundiskengi, Bui and Bodi, Branskeg and Saig. Daughters they had, and their names are here. Snot, Bruth, Svani, Svari, Spraki, Flioth, Sprund and Fief, Feina, Ristil, and thence has risen the yeoman's race. Thence went Rig, his road was straight. A hall he saw, the doors faced south. The portal stood wide on the post, was a ring. Then in he fared, the floor was strewn. Within two gazed in each other's eyes. Vadir and Modir, and played with their fingers. They sat the house lord. There sat the house lord, wound strings for the bow. Shafts he fashioned, and bows he shaped. The lady sat at her arms she looked. She smoothed the cloth and fitted the sleeves. Gay was her cap, on her breast were clasps. Broad was her train, of blue was her gown. Her brows were bright, her breast was shining, whiter her neck than new-fallen snow. Brig knew well wise words to speak, soon in the midst of the room he sat, and on either side the others were. Then Muthir brought a broidered cloth of linen bright and the board she covered. And then she took the loaves so thin and laid them white from the wheat on the cloth. Then forth she brought the vessels full with silver covered and set before them. Meat all browned and well-cooked birds. In the pitcher was wine of plate were the cups, so drank they, and talked till the day was gone. Rig knew well wise words to speak. Soon did he rise, made ready to sleep. So in the bed himself did he lay, and on either side the others were. Thus was he there for three nights long. Then forward he went on the midmost way, and so nine months were soon passed by. A son had Modir, in silk they wrapped him, with water they sprinkled him. Jarl he was, blonde was his hair, and bright his cheeks. Grim as a snake's were his glowing eyes. To grow in the house did Jarl begin, Shields were brandished, and bowstrings wound. Bows he shot, and shafts he fashioned. Arrows he loosened, and lances wielded. Horses he rode, and hounds unleashed. Swords he handled, and sounds he swam. Straight from the grove came striding Rig. Rig came striding, and runes he taught him. By his name he called him, 
as son. He claimed him and bade him hold his heritage wide, his heritage wide, the ancient homes. Forward he rode through the forest dark or the busty crags till a hall he found. His spear he shook, his shield he brandished, his horse he spurred, with his sword he hewed. Wars he raised and reddened the fields. Warriors slew he and land he won. Eighteen halls ere long did he hold. Wealth did he get and gave to all. Stones and jewels and slim flanked steeds, rings he offered and armed, rings he offered and arm rings shared. His messengers went by the ways so wet and came to the hall where Hersir dwelt. His daughter was fair and slender figure. His daughter was fair and slender fingered. Erna the wise the maiden was. Her hand they sought, and home they brought her. Wedded to Jarl, the veil she wore, together they dwelt, their joy was great. Children they had, and happy they lived. Bur was the eldest, and Barn the next. Yoth and Athel, Arfi, Mog, Neith, and Svein. Soon they began, Sun and Neithjung, to play and swim. Kund was one, and the youngest, Kon. Soon grew up the sons of Jarl. Beasts they tamed, and bucklers rounded. Shafts they fashioned, and spears they shook. But Kon the Young learned runes to use, runes everlasting, the runes of life. Soon could be well the warrior's shield, dulled the sword blade and still the seas. Bird chatter learned he, flames could he lessen, minds could quiet, and sorrows calm. The might and strength of twice four men. With Regyal soon the runes he shared, more crafty he was and greater his wisdom. The right he sought and soon he won it, Rig to be called and runes to know. Young Kun rode forth through forest and grove. Shafts let loose, and birds he lured. There spake a crow on a bough that sat. Why lurest thou, Con, the birds to come? T'were better forth on thy steed to fare, and the host to slay. The halls of Don and Dump are noble. Greater their wealth than thou hast gained. Good are they at guiding the keel, trying of weapons, and giving of wounds. All right, so there we have it. All the folks out here, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dogs, cats, goldfish, wherever you are, whoever you are listening and watching, there we have the lay of Rig. Rig Stula. So I'm anxious to hear what you all think. And if you care to, please, down in the comment section, whether you're watching this during the premiere or afterwards, wherever you catch this, down in the comment section, let us know an individual in your life, your father, a father figure perhaps, a person in your life that helped shape you into the individual who you are. Because our fathers, our, our, our male folk, um, in our communities are carry a great burden. They, 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 they carry a lot of responsibility. And this is not, again, a slight in any 
way to um, anyone who identifies in, in any certain way. Um, but you take in the responsibility. Let us know down in the comments um, who that person is. Give them a special hail. Give them a special thanks on this United States celebration of Father's Day. So hail to the fathers. Hail to the father folk. Hail to my father. Hail to Kenneth Stillwagon. He made me the man that I am today. He raised me to be a responsible adult and raised me to learn and understand and, and, and know certain things about life and, and the way life tends to go. So hail to my father. Hail to your father. Hail to the fathers. And hail to you all. Thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of today's premiere. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts down in the comments section below. And don't forget to share the videos. If anything in the description catches your interest, check it out and support Midgar Musings in any way that you can. Hail to you all. And until we talk again, take care. <laughs>